Good afternoon, good evening rather, everybody. How are you today? Tuesday, the 8th of December. My, oh my. Let's get a bit of birds in. How are you? Had a good weekend? Coping with the very chilly, foggy weather that we seem to be having at the moment? Very November-ish, even though it's December. Good evening, Heather. How are you? We've got three people on the go this evening. That's lovely to have you with me. And we've got our little Robin. I'll be plugging my ears in shortly. So obviously this is a drawing class, so there's no drawing to do until we do the drawing, which is the, the whole lesson, isn't it, I suppose? Um, I'm, I'll talk to you about the composition and what have you as well. It's going to be good. You'll need an embossing tool today if you've got one or a biro lid. He says as he hunts for his embossing tool. You have still got some, I think, for sale. Um on the online shop if you're not uh, in. Good evening, Christine. How are you? <clears throat> Okie dokes. Let's... Uh Let's get my ear plugged in, see who's who, if anyone is on Discord. We may have Sandra, I'm not sure about Nick. Oh, we have both. How lovely. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Nick. How are you? I've just been having a rant on the District Council Facebook page. Yes, they're planning on increasing the town centre parking charges over the next few years to save them some money. <laughs> well, th this is what my rant said to them. I said, you know, you announce this at a time when most councils are actually giving their town centres free parking to help the retail sector get back on their feet. Um, we've lost 600 spaces with the destruction of the multi-storey car park and the building work that's been going on. So it's not been great to find a space to park anyway. And now they announce from next year they're going to start. I don't know when it will happen. Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, it's really unfair. I mean, just, just for me as a business owner to come into town, I only live six miles away, but for me to drive in and pay to park to run a business it costs me two thousand pounds a year just in fuel and parking charges i mean that's extortionate um because we don't get you know there are there are probably one percent of all of all um of all businesses have their own parking spaces in the town center so we all have to park so when when you think of that we sorry for ranting um christine and heather it, it's just so frustrating um that you know most of the car parking spaces when they're reduced are actually made up by people who have to work in the town or who run businesses um yes we might have had some of us might have had government support to, to help us get through this but when they're constantly allowing out of town we've got two out of town retail parks now We've got every major supermarket is now out of town. We're soon to get a little, but that's that's a mile and a half away from this shop because it's the other side of town. Um, all major supermarkets offer free parking. Both retail parks offer free parking. The town centre, parking charges. So it'll happen over the next two years. It's I, I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. They know it's a contentious issue. And for me... The 80 pence for an hour, I, they haven't said what they're going to increase it to, but they want to raise an extra £400,000 a year from it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, th this, is, this is the issue. I, I think... Um, if they reduced parking charges they'd get a much higher turnaround of traffic so they'd probably make more money from 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 offsetting it and making it more affordable for people to come in than by making it more expensive for people to come in 
I, I, I just don't understand. I know, it's, um, I, I think, I know, it's, uh, it's, it's so frustrating. I mean, you know, during the pandemic, the least they could do, because they've not helped us in any way, we, we've got our grants from them, but they've got it from central government. So they haven't actually helped us um, that th they've just transferred it over. Um, as I say, Leamington Spa has got free parking over Christmas because to help to help the shops and the hospitality sector. You know, if, if a big place like Leamington can do it, why can't a small market town like Banbury and, and Bicester? Because Kidlington's always free because of an ancient charter. So it's it's so frustrating that, you know, when we're on our knees and we're trying to remain hopeful, you know, we're trying to think, all oh, right, so there's a, a vaccine on the way. There's there's hope at the end of the tunnel. Maybe we've got some normality coming. CDC announced today, four hours ago, that they're going to start increasing parking charges over the next two years. Um, when, in my mind, they should be decreasing it. Um, I find it extremely frustrating. Yep. It's... Uh, It, it, it certainly feels like, I mean, they, they had a high street first policy, which they had to abandon when uh, when they allowed all the retail out, out of town retail parks. Yeah, well, I think they, they need there needs to be a balance. There needs to be an offset because it is free in, in out of town and it makes it more convenient. I'm not actually against some form of parking charge if they gave the first two hours free or, you know, that and that would encourage short term shopping or even the first hour free, um, what, whatever. I mean, even if it's not free parking, um, they need to do something. But to increase charges at a time when you know we've, we're losing Debenhams we've lost our Marks and Spencers because it's gone out of town um, we're, we're trying to make it a very strong independent business based led town but we you know as, as independents we rely on the big chains to bring in the footfall well without the big chains we can try and do what we can but with increased parking charges that's going to diminish the footfall that we've got and those people that are now used to shopping online are not going to want to change their habits and come back into the town centre because of it. Or they'll go to other town centres where it is free. So it is a little bit frustrating. So um, that is uh, my uh, my little rant. I've put it on Twitter because tonight uh, between um, eight and nine is Indie Hour um, on Twitter and it's all about independent businesses. So I've tagged my rant to the chair the, the guy that leads indie hour on twitter who's all about um retail mentoring and trying to get a good uh, a good way for independent businesses did they It is. It's. It's. It. To me. Yeah, and now it's it's free from seven now, um, so it's. Uh, but you see, two years ago. Well, when we have small business Saturday, on the first Saturday in December which is to encourage everyone to, to shop in the town centres and support small businesses. Cherwell used to give us a day's free parking on that Saturday. Last year they refused. This year they haven't even bothered to even consider it. 
Um, and we also used to have um, three from three in January for a month to help us recover in the, you know, the start of the new year. January or February was three from three instead of three from 7 p.m. It was three from 3 p.m. Um, but they stopped that last year. They refused to do it. And we haven't had it this year. And we, we're not going to get it this year. So it's... Um, it's sort of just when you think, oh, maybe we've got a bit of hope. Maybe we can sail through um, all of this badness and horribleness. They announced this. I mean, the timing is impeccable. But anyway. Well, this is it because the the the, the trouble is, um, it 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 just makes it so much more viable to go somewhere else or stay stay at home. So I don't I don't quite understand their No. Yeah. No. Right. Rant over for a bit. We have to do a bit of drawing. It is a cute little robin today. Mm -hmm. oh, you had a pet robin, didn't you, while you were doing the garden, Nick? Coming in and nipping it, nicking your worms. <laughs> right what i want to do is actually you can see on the image the that the robin is actually offset it's just because he's got such a long tail as well that it um it forces his head to be smack bang in the middle um so we i'm just trying to work out where he so his body is going to be about it's going to start so not including the tail about four fingers in and about his legs no no his body not his legs are about four fingers up see if we can sort of work out his body and his head and then start building building it up from there it's round about four fingers wide but and and four fingers wide because it's sort of an oh it would help if I put the pencil the right way around wouldn't it Trying to draw with the, uh, the the flat end, so I've drawn a sort of oval shape that incorporates that. It's slightly flatter on the top, so like an egg actually, more of an egg, but an an, an upside down egg, because he's. His bum bit is a bit narrower than the top bit because that's not including his head. 
because his head is about a thumb width, a thumb height, and two fingers. Two fingers wide. And if you notice, it's very similar. It comes out level with his chest. I've drawn that straight line down. Um, just so you can see his chest and is not including his beak. Come out there and then it's all about fitting it in and making it. I'm just going to rub that extra bit of a line out there because it's a bit confusing for anyone. And I'll rub out that line now where I drew because we want to sort of tie it together with a few simple joining up lines so a bit of a line there and a bit of a line there might make him a bit fatter actually and then I can rub out all the extra lines so we've got like a, a funny potato really It's um, about a thumb width high, but two fingers wide. I've got a pile of things on my side and I keep knocking it all with my elbow today I've normally got my desk clear but I was trying to get a commission done and loads of other bits and bobs okay so what should we do next let's get his tail in which is actually four fingers um, three fingers Around about three fingers ish, three and a half, depends really. Um, which is level with his feet. Now, his feet are about a finger width. So, if you think that the branch, I'm just going to draw a rough line, is about there, and the tail comes down to there in a, almost a straight line from his back, and then a, a, a sort of a triangle. that and then I can erase that line there it sort of comes in a bit like that I think. So I'm still using the HB or TB pencil, whichever. Um, whichever you think is, is the best for you. About a finger width into his, his neck area is where the wing starts. And that sweeps round to about a finger width into the tail area. hint of a little triangle there <coughs> I 
So we've got a basic bird shape. Now that could be sort of any any small bird. Um, obviously it couldn't be a duck or a, or a pigeon or anything. They've got specific shapes, but it could be, it could be a chaffinch, it could be a sparrow, um, a little wren. Um, it, it's a, it's the good basic shape having that sort of egg with the the head sitting on level it's the beak and and what have you that also makes the difference for something like a robin now i don't know if you've realized but his eye is roughly in the middle of the head and it's about the size of your pencil if you could if you if you've got a round pencil and you sort of drew round it that would give you your bird eye and the beak runs on a straight line out and it's about a little finger wide comes in to about a pencil width from the eye. It's not very pointy. And robins have quite fat heads. And then we can play with the patterns. But the leg has got a bend of a leg that comes like that. And then another one that's slight hidden. I've got so many pictures of robins. It's always difficult to know which one to go for. they can look so different I've got a lovely one of a robin singing but I, I thought that would be really tricky well not this week but next week when it comes to the painting side of it I thought it might be a bit tricky to try and get a little robin with his mouth open oh lovely so we've got two visible claws over that and then a, a back one and sort of almost one and a back one and it's about a thumb width they're quite long back back toes if you like Think of the pattern for him. You want to make the eyes as rounded as possible because you want him to look a little bit cute, don't you? So, about a pencil width out, I'm going to draw around my finger because that's where his red breast comes like that. Let me rub some of that out as well now robins are tricky in pencil i thought i'd just say that now while we're all here um because you've got red gray and brown but we're only using gray so that's where it's a little bit tricky Quite sure what I th I think. Um, yeah, it is right. It just looks weird without having any. Um, without the colour, I think. That's 
sort of just make his legs a little bit thicker rather than just sticks. And obviously I've I just drew a straight line for this, but a branch is supposed to be a bit knobbly. Now, I've got a question for you. If you look at that picture, not my drawing, but the actual photograph, you know that branch or the twig that's coming straight up in front of the robin? Do you think that would be better moved to the left slightly? Because it's kind of too, too close. I mean, obviously it's a photograph, so that's what it is, but I'm just thinking in terms of composition and art, whether... I should move it two to three fingers from the from the left hand side um, and it's about a pencil width and let me I do like that it sort of frames him a little so we'll go up like that maybe and add a few nobbles and bobbles something like that so that's your basic composition that should work now there is another branch that's come in sort of off here that's part of this same sort of network should look a bit like a robin even though we haven't drawn it as a robin you know you, you could cheat later on and add a bit of red crayon or something or, or just to make it more robin like perhaps I'm still not happy with his head. I don't know. I don't know if I need to move his eyes slightly more left. It could just be the shading. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna trust my initial instinct and know that I put it in the right place and hope that I'm right. So I'll mark in his back feathers of his wing a little. It's appropriate that we've got bird song again this evening.
I think obviously it's much bigger than a real robin as well, isn't it? It's you know, twice the size. Only tiny little things, aren't they? Right, so I think there are a few ways we can do embossing on, on our robin. Um, if you look at the background as well, it's actually quite a bit darker around where his chest is, isn't it? Compared to where his tail is, and that's really useful for us. It also means that we can't do it until we've done a bit of embossing. So embossing is where it becomes a little bit annoying, I'm afraid, um, because we do emboss everything. Um, not so much on the wings. There's no need to emboss that, but definitely where the red comes. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap with my eraser the area around the red breast and under his beak and his sort of left hand profile if you like because that way I can flick out with the embosser and it will um, hopefully you can hear how I'm doing it so I'm just following the the flow of the feathers almost said fur but use the same technique Um, it's the mine's not the finest one. It's the next one up. Yeah, it's a slightly chunkier one. So if you think of the the face, the same with feathers as it is with fur, it goes up <coughs> over the beak, around the eye, and then sort of like works as a almost clock dial to come across round and down. And I'm not just doing the, the red bit, I'm going across under the wings and right underneath. Yeah, I'm doing the whole red bit and the whole grey bit, but not the wing. You could do most of his head as well, I think. but Because uh, obviously you can see that where his legs are, that's all furry as well. Slightly longer fur. So don't be frightened to overlap some of your lines. Crisscross them a little bit to make it feel a little bit more natural. bring a few of the lines outside his body and that that would also help when we put a background on so we need the background obviously when we do this in acrylics it's going to be slightly different because we can do the background first and then the robin looks like it's in front because we can put the lighter colors on top but when it comes to something like this it can't be done in the same way Uh, 
Um, I only did sort of like almost level with the top of the wing. And I haven't, I've, I've sort of lessened it off as I've gone over the top of his head and towards the wing area. But the wing is definitely not touched because that's not fluffy. They're, they're longer feathers there. And the more you do, it's annoying, I know, but the more you do now, the easier it will be later on. If you think you can take shortcuts with the embossing, you can't really. You can go really quick and not think about it as much, that's fine. I haven't got my lamp on today because I thought it would diffuse it but as I've got a few more darker lines it's going to make the, the robin sort of disappear a little bit. decide do we do the background now yes I think we might have to do you have any graphite pads or any of you yes all underneath going right up to his tail and just flicking over a little bit of his tail Um, really trusty piece of cotton wool. So this is this is just the background. Oh, I, I keep it in my little box with all my other bits. Now this is where I realise that I've got greasy fingers and they've gone all over. I'll have to turn them into leaves or something. So I'm concentrating on the triangle around the robin's chest area and then I'm moving backwards it doesn't matter if you go over his legs a little bit either um, so it gets a bit paler everywhere else so the darkest area of concentration you can go over your twigs and stuff as well if you want now you can go a little bit deeper than that but obviously you can only build so much graphite up on your paper before it uh, 
decides it doesn't want to play anymore and you need to make it look a little bit natural and not just like you've decided to go and do half and not the other half so on the screen it looks really weird now but I have got tone on all of this but it is centered to the left of the robin let me quickly flip to camera two just so you can see I have got tone on there I think that works so obviously on on the actual robin himself the gray area is the lightest area of tone and you can probably do that just with a dirty finger or something if you rub your finger on a bit of graphite stick just so it's a little bit dirty and you can see so this is just for your, your lighter tones so where you've embossed it will stand out but we can darken around it a little bit more but it sort of picks out the pencil lines a little bit the embossed lines rather than pencil lines oh, it's so frustrating that it's bleaching itself out mm, I have just by accident um, I'm just going to put this dirty bit of paper here because it uh, the the extra bit of white helps you see where the robin is Now part of me does want to make that background even darker but the only way I can do that is um, maybe with a really dirty smudgy stick and some 9B um, scribbled on it because that robin is absolutely lighter than the background. And it's one of those things, I don't want to lose his, um, his beak, which I'm in the danger of. See, if I, if I rub the, the stick on the paper, it's fine, but it's going to give me a really dappled texture. But I'm going to have to do it, because I need this to be dark. I'm not pressing down hard. And then maybe get my tortillon. I mean, it would give us a different texture to the uh, to the robin anyway. But uh, it's just so frustrating that you need texture in your paper for the graphite to work well. 
but sadly that texture also means that when you're doing something like this it shows up <coughs> I'm gonna have to balance it out now because there's a bit too much it's too centered either side that twig Yeah, I really need to because I was looking at the picture and trying to work it out as a grey tone. And um, the grey on his chest is, is lighter, is the lightest, but then the red has to be still lighter than the background. Um, which is quite hard. I think I'm going to have to cheat and pop his beak in with a sort of 7D or something because I've lost it. I need a little bit of a line that I can soften. So this is, this is going to be the trickiest bit, the red, because it has to be, I might just use the smudgy stick for it, because it has to be darker. Than the gray. Still might have to outline him, which I didn't really want to do, because it looks a bit cheaty for the outline. And it's going to be difficult as well to to to, to show the difference between the shading on the grey and the red because it's all in grey obviously when we work with paint it's no problem because we've got colours and this is generally where um, the drawing side of things gives you a, a totally different experience if you like than the painting side now I've I can see that my red breast colour is the same colour as my background so I'm going to have to sort of lighten it somehow maybe if I just dab my putty rubber on it particularly um, that was the um, that was actually what was left on my my paper stump See, part of me wants to make that background really dark. You see, if we were painting, we'd make it really dark grey. If you look, if you look at it and just relax your vision a little, you can see just how dark that is. But we can't let the red look like look like it's white. We have to just cheat and do a little bit of a a 7B outline around him to bring him forward maybe oh I don't know maybe if I stick his eye in before coffee break that will that will help I do need to sharpen my 9 oh no I've got a new 9B I can use just for this only Leave just 
just a small little area of white. hide that 9b because I can see that I'll just keep going dark if I can if I've got it in my hand I'll use it for everything and that's not good because there is a little bit of shading around the eye that's a little bit darker on the left under the beak a little but then go a little bit darker in and under the tail a little There are a few slightly darker lines in. You see that the issue is we need it to. Maybe I need to emphasize the line of the red. Still not happy with that background. Hopefully, it'll look less like a pigeon, Heather. Hopefully. Once we do a bit more now, the, the the problem here is I'm still not happy with that background. I feel it needs to be much darker, almost the same sort of dark as the top of his head is. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more. Um, not very often I'm this annoyed with my pictures, but. Uh,
because I want the texture for the branch so I, I do want to try and soften the background texture I'll, I'll add a little bit up here to balance it out a fraction and then I will use the paper stump to spread and soften and then I think we'll pop the kettle on because the, the graphite stick will definitely really help the uh, the texture of the twig and branch right I think I'm happier now with that at least <sighs> yes Okay, definitely try to put the kettle on and we can work on his back. But this way you can start to see which need, what bits need to be lifted out, what bits need to be um, darkened or embossed further. I think I'm going to have to sort of lighten part of the red a little bit more. Oh, we need to stop fiddling. I'm going to put the kettle on. Do more of that in a bit.
and I'm back. I am much happier. I was just trying to look from afar. It's quite hard, you know, because when you when you're doing something like this, the the light reflects off the graphite a little bit, so I can see it better on on the camera sort of thing, but it still doesn't give it the same impression of seeing it in real life. But I think I think it'll work. Um, but obviously the seven B will be really important. Especially for the legs. Now the legs have got an almost white I'm going to use my battery rubber for that I think if I can get a thin enough line now I've got here I wonder if that'll work I've got an eraser shield if you got the smudgy stick set an eraser shield comes with the um, the set it's like a a silver metal credit card it, it, did you get the set with all of the different sticks and things in it, oh it should maybe it fell out you should have one it comes it comes with the set oh don't cry I can um I can say we've already posted your order off though so I can um I can add it because we sell them separately they're only like one pound thirty each but it's just um, a little bit of almost like tin foil with different holes and shapes punched out. But it does mean that if you're a bit wonky with your erasing, you can get really good straight lines out of it. And that's really brought that leg forward. Um, I'm, I, I, I feel it's a gimmick, but actually it really helps. So does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Maybe I need to darken. Find him. Could have done it though. Has Nick made himself? Has Nick gone to make a cuppa? Yeah. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah, what that will be, we get that with our, st our shop deliveries. No, what, what? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that happens with our deliveries all the time when we have several boxes. What happens is, and it's stupid, um, so I'll order a, a delivery and it, it should come in four boxes or five boxes and we might only get three of the five or four of the five. And what they do is they go by the weight of the van and then they take off certain items and then put it on the next delivery, which is usually the next day. So it should come tomorrow if if that's happened with your delivery um and it's really annoying i don't know why they do it and they don't just um do it for like a random delivery why they split somebody's you know parcels that they've ordered it's it's ridiculous yeah Oh, the bird song's finished. We need the bird song back for our robin. What? You're not. You, you, 
he's not finished already. Oh, we'll have to have a look there on the excitement chest, don't you? Hang on a minute. Oh, that's nice then. What did you use for that? Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Oh, that's nice, Sandra, as well. Yeah. See, what I might do, you, you've got, we've got these sort of out of focus branches, haven't we, in the distance? And I don't know whether if I just sort of drag my putty rubber through. Well, that sort of works. Um, I've got a little branch on the, the top right, yeah, the top triangle. It, it's because the camera keeps bleaching out and I think, um, yeah, well, I don't know if I want it. I, I put it in because it's in the picture, but I actually don't know if I want to keep it or not. Um, so here's a bit of 7B on here. That's going to be really dark under that wing. So yeah, next week's the last one of the year. Can you believe it? It's quite scary when you start thinking how close Christmas is. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, might as well. What you got? What you got, Nick? What you got? Oh, that's a bit like when you go out and they go, "Not, I'm not hungry. So you don't order for them and then they spend half the rest of the night just eating your food. I'll get there in a bit. I'll get there. Right, now I can feel I've got three different um, tones. I was going to say, you sound like you're pushing it a bit there, mister. You'd be wearing it instead of eating it. Did you cower when she bought it to you? <laughs> I think that was, I don't, does he look in proportion? I don't know if his head's not wide enough now. Uh-uh. <laughs> 
She, you mean she hasn't put it on the floor and stood on it, so it sh squirts up your leg? I've had the tail in all the time. I've just I've just emphasized it with this 7V. <laughs> Someone said to me that they need to um, increase the parking charges to make up for the shortfall of the rates missing from all the empty shop units that they own. Obviously, because with Debenhams going, that's 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 quite a hefty, hefty, hefty lot of rent that they've lost. Um, probably about the four hundred thousand pounds a year that they're trying to reclaim from parking. Yeah, they would. The trouble is, they don't listen to anybody's opinion. By that, and and the and the issue is, by the time. Like with the parking thing, by the time it's reached uh, us who never get consulted ears, it's already been passed and approved, and um, you know the signs ordered kind of thing. It's uh, it's always the way I've I've dealt with the council a lot over the years in various capacities, and I've found by the time it gets out to public consultation, it's already been passed anyway. They're bothered to consult us to make us feel like we've got a say, but actually we don't have a say. Um, it's just a got it's a nice little placebo effect, um, and then they go, we take on board everything that you say. We'll go back and we'll feed back and discuss it some more. But they don't. They just go ahead and do it anyway. It happened with everything. I mean, we didn't get told when the multi-story car park was being pulled down. We were given eight hours notice. Yeah, because it had concrete cancer. Um, now, but what's really interesting with that, as a little side story, is oh, two years before it got pulled down, I spoke on two separate occasions in my capacity as chair of the Old Town Association to two different councillors and asked them what happens if and when that multi-storey car park gets concrete cancer and has to be pulled down. One of them shrugged his shoulders and said, don't know, we haven't thought that far ahead. And the other went, oh, Castle Key 2 will be built by, by then and or it will have thousands of more spaces instead. Well, Castle Key 2 is still being built and we've lost more spaces while it's being built. And um, what they could have done is because they own all of the land um, to the side of where the multi-storey car park is. So they could have actually built a new multi-storey car park to the one side in preparation for the other car park being knocked down but they didn't because they didn't plan ahead i don't know it's 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 something within the concrete that causes it to crumble and it had it um many years before and they would sort of like patched it and injected it with things and and to strengthen it and and then they had to have annual checks on it to make sure that it was stable and and what have you and then on a Thursday evening at 6 p.m., they had a check and it was considered too dangerous to reopen the next day. Which was kind of shocking. And uh, from that point on, the car park was closed. A part of the ground level was allowed to open, but you couldn't go on any of the others. And then it was just a matter of time before it got demolished. And then it took a while before they rebuilt the ground level car park. But because of the foundations, um, are still the, the foundations are still there I don't think so I think they just like graveled over it no nope. they can't even put a half floor on which is which is so frustrating
Hmm, now I've got to think, do I want to do my twigs and branches now and see how it looks? I, do you know what? My robin's not fat enough. I thought he was, but looking at him compared to the, fi the photo, I don't know if I need to bring his back out a bit more, not much more. That's a bit, that's a bit better. Right now, I think I'll go with the six, 6B graphite stick. Now, basically, I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to rub it in the angle of the branch. Take that up a little way. Yeah, that works. I can add the nobbles on afterwards. But with this one, with the big one, I'm actually going to do it in a sort of curve. one way from the top down and then do it from the bottom up I think I need a shorter one um, use your pencil if you don't have a graphite stick use your pencil on the top line and then use your smudgy stick to drag it down in a curve it will give the same effect um, because it's that curve curvature of the branch followed by an outline. I don't really want to outline it, you see. But it gives such a lovely effect. Then I can sort of battery erase his back. They're not feet, but you know what I mean, his toes. And then outline them again. Because he's got his back sort of toe. Let's call it a toe. Is that nice pizza, Nick? I'm not jealous, it's fine. I've had I've had four biscuits and a packet of crisps for my tea. So I'm stuck here. I don't want to make you feel bad, but you know, that's how it goes. Eh? No, definitely not four pints and a packet of crisps. That would be nice. So I've used the graphite stick. Oh, would you were you not watching? Oh, so, so I grabbed the stick, so at the top line of the branch, and then curved it downwards. So I kept kept the branch, the 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 stick level with the top of the branch shape, and curved it downwards, and then did the same from the bottom, and curved it upwards. And now I'm. Oh, that, that one. Oh, oh, no. What I did with that is I just ran it up. I went like that. Yeah, using it flat. So it doesn't give a curvy texture. But I'm adding the nobbles onto it now. As you do.
I'm sad I've watched all the crown now because I've not um I've been watching it solidly almost nearly every night when I get back apart from Monday and Tuesday nights I've like been catching up because I st if you remember I started from series one about a month ago so I've managed to catch up and watch all four series but now what do I watch I've heard the Queen's Gambit is supposed to be good but I I don't know She's watched The Crown now, hasn't she? I loved it. But, like I said, I have to keep reminding myself that it's not real. Or largely not real. Well, there is that element, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, how how she was treated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good actress playing Diana. Because obviously it's the the fourth series is our childhood, isn't it? Really. Um, and uh, the way Margaret Thatcher was portrayed is amazing. She's a very good actress, isn't she? Um, Gillian Anderson, yeah. Because I watched, there was a, a, a dramatisation of um, Great Expectations and she played Miss Havisham, which was really good. She was perfect and haunting enough and, and stable enough to make it really believable. Okay, the call. The fall. Mm. I watched a really good film with um, Angelina Jolie over the weekend. She's an FBI agent following a, a serial killer trying to find him. And what he does is the person he kills, he then takes their identity. So nobody knows that they're missing. Really clever. Quite a good film, actually. Quite quite gripping in places. I like, I'm not into like loads of bloodshed and stuff, but I do like a bit of a drama and I like a bit of action and car chase and stuff. And that's, uh, that's got all of that. Oh, did you ever watch Lost? I mean, I was lost. I, I was quite into the first series, but then it just... Yeah, I couldn't work it out. Uh, that was quite disappointing for me, the ending. My mum, my mom actually, I gave up after two or three series, but mum kept watching it right to the end. And I said to her, what, what do you think? And she said, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue what's going on now. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, go with it anymore. I think I'm gonna have to highlight. Gosh, it's half past eight. Wow. Uh, mind you, that said, there's not a huge amount left to do.
Oh, okay. Oh, you see, I'm not. I'm not into much sci-fi. I um. But I do like space. I do like this. I do like space. Okay. I might check that out. We just got. See, I couldn't get into the new the remake of um, oh, Lost in Space. I can't remember. It was um, it was because there was the robot. It was quite comical, wasn't it? Doctor Smith was quite a comedic character in the nineteen sixties version of Lost in Space, and it's like, um, uh, it, it, yeah, nineteen sixties Lost in Space. Um, it was a long, long series. It, it used to be on on a. It was repeated in the in the eighties here on the, on a Sunday morning uh, with Land of the Giants. It was Land of the Giants and Lost in Space. Um, they were cool, but they all were slightly comedic in in uh, in how it worked. I don't think I can do any more to this. I've got there's all the elements. I need if I just pop this white paper back. I I'm now contemplating is my grey not grey enough? But it's always so tricky to know how far to do something or not. Started looking at. Oh, it got on the wrong screen. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're both. They're both great. Yeah, you. I think. I. I think you'd need to nine B your beak, Sandra. Go as, as almost as black and his eye. Um, because if you if because Nick's because Nick's cheated and he's gonna you can see on his that his eye and beak really stand out. I do like the texture of your uh, branches, Nick, as well. It's it's tricky, isn't it? I I think yours looks so nice, Nick. 
not only because it's it's been created by you, of course, but <laughs> but because you've added the colour and the colour makes the brain do the work, doesn't it? You know what I mean? You, you think, oh, well, yes, that's a really nice robin. Um, because it looks like a robin, whereas it's 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 difficult to get the balance right on something like this because ah turn it for a minute yeah that is the thing with pencil yeah that's better that is it, it's it's funny it's it's when you take the photograph it's always a little bit trickier to um to see Christine and Heather, how are you getting on with this? Um, is it less like a pigeon? If I, I'm trying to work out, it's probably the beak shape that might be wrong. Um, try not to have it hooked. It's uh, it is it is tricky, but obviously the difference is going to be next week when um, when we paint a scene. We can do some really nice pinky greys behind and um, a nice orange colour so there'll be quite a few well, actually I don't know there won't be a load of colours I think next week it'll kind of be cadmium red cadmium yellow burnt sienna and ultramarine and we can do most of that next week I bet it won't look like a pigeon. Yes, I don't blame you. You can go and cuddle on the settee next to your missus and watch a film. <laughs> oh. See you later, Nick. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. just eat that oh I see I need to sort of do the edge of his eye it's quite white on that he's got like a proper white bit on on the corner of the, the side of his eye have you noticed I wonder if I can create that with Oh, it's going to be tricky that. I don't know if I can do it with an erasing shield. I'm going to try. And the painting will probably go. No. Oh, well, maybe that's right. No, I think we're all um, a bit like a robin. Well, I'd go with that, Christine. Run with it quickly. Yeah, I don't think I can do any more. I'll be posting, obviously, I'll be posting this. And then next week, we'll be doing the painted version of it. It is, can you see how the camera really reacts um, without extra white in? So if I pop some white here, look, you can, you can see the whole screen. It's a lot better. But I am concerned a bit there. I don't know if I need to... fine line between making something white that should be red um, but it needs to have yeah I think I think um, 
I think that's it. If you are taking it, uh, I was just Sandra was just saying to me um, because I added that white paper there. She's uh, struggled taking a photograph of her picture, but she's just put some white paper underneath, and the colours have, have come out a lot more. Sometimes the your your cameras react exactly like this camera here, and it will um, bleach out certain aspects of a picture. So it's just something to bear in mind for future images and what have you. Well, you know what? A bird's a bird, isn't it? Maybe you could do it as your Christmas card, a pigeon in disguise or something, um, Heather. Hopefully, don't forget, next week with the painting, you can trace a printout of it if you wanted to get it more Robin-like. But honestly, it's the same as when you do fruit bowls and, and stuff like that. When you do a fruit bowl in paint, a, a yellow curve will look like a banana, no matter how badly it's painted. But drawing a banana in pencil as a study how do you make that look yellow you can't and and how does it look different to an orange or an apple it, it, when you work in gray tone like we're doing it really forces you to think of tonal values so it's quite nice and it's almost like a, a proper art school doing it this way where we do a full tonal drawing and then create a painting uh, because we're working out the shadow and the lights and the darks, such as the background and the and the the red breast kind of thing. How how dark I've had to go to make the the bird pop forward. Um, so it 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 does such a lot to learn how to do a drawing. And this is the only lesson really where we really can get into depth with it. Where one week we do drawing, the next week we do a painting. You know, in all of the classes, we might revisit an image um in a different class so i might do it in on a wednesday afternoon drawing one month and then five six months down the line or years i'll do it in a watercolor class or then i might do it in an acrylic class so the same image gets recycled uh, but it takes a long time and not everybody is in the same classes to do it in the different media so um this is where the cheat it's what i love it's it's not the most popular well attended class because it started during the first lockdown um so it's it's hard to know how it would pan out it's not the most popular class but i think you learn the most in it over two weeks because of of learning how to draw and then how to paint it so i, I think it's a really good one and it's a nice one i've finished my sketchbook um i've i've nicked a collins and davidson one off the shelf um this is a sea white one which is lovely I want to try the Collins and Davidson ones in as well that we can get. They're quite a bit more expensive, but they're a thicker hardback sketchbook. So um, that'll be quite exciting. So coming up this week, tomorrow afternoon is drawing. And we're doing the gates of Ashby St. Ledger Manor, which is, uh, I've got a, uh, a family link to that. Not, not as in earls or lords or whatever, but my great uncle served in the army as a zapper as a sapper um in world war Two, and he was stationed at the manor house and he was killed in training um, and we never knew where he was and then we found some old letters and he was in aspicient ledger and it's only about eight miles from my house um or maybe a bit longer it's a 20 minute drive um the other side of badby ashby st ledger and uh i went there just to see if i could find something or feel something um I, I went there two years ago it was really interesting so thursday morning we are drawing eyes so if you want to learn how to draw human eye it might only be one eye i don't know uh, we're doing that on thursday morning in pencil thursday afternoon watercolor and it's snowy wooden shadows which will be repeated on monday evening thursday evening is a snow scene in watercolor using two colors friday morning is the week two of three of flower symbolism in art history friday afternoon Hair gazing is a super moon in watercolour. Saturday morning is calligraphy. Um, and I will post what you need um, beforehand, a, a day or two before. Uh, Sunday morning is my birthday. And I'm also doing a watercolour class. And it's the peak of Stob Do in watercolour in the snow. And it's actually one that we did as a demo on Monday morning's class two weeks ago. Um, so it's just a slightly longer lesson of that. 
and then Monday morning is uh, figures in a snowy wood in permanent black pen and then snowy wooden shadows Monday night Tuesday afternoon is acrylics and it's a snow filled woodland in the no it's not it's the 15th next week it's an old barn in the snow I've got plenty of old barns in the snow and then next Tuesday evening is our little robin in acrylics so thank you so so much for joining me this week it's been lovely to have your company i do look forward to seeing what you do i might okay i will have a look at that in a bit i might tweak my robin and make him a bit fatter i don't know i'll see what it looks like as a photograph and then fiddle a little bit longer so thank you so much enjoy the rest of your evening what's left of it i might get home before 10 o'clock tonight since we finished a bit earlier uh, that'll be quite nice um, at least it's not foggy this evening coming home last night it was really really thick dense fog my whole journey back um, so I was going a bit slower so it was very late when I got in but anyway thank you so much take care and um, I will speak to you all soon bye bye everybody bye bye